Okay. Um, in this last video, we're going to take our model that we finished. Uh, I'm going to finish the last finishing touches on this to make sure it's ready to go into Spatial. And then we're going to export it and upload it to Spatial so we can view it in VR. So this would be like as if you were completely done with your room. Now, this is basically my room, but with nothing inside of it. Okay, I've got like the, the base uh, box here, which is kind of the walls and everything. If I hide it, you can see that I have some different rafters and different things I've made as well, kind of on the top. Um, and then the door, the door frame. I don't really even have a handle yet. There's still a lot of elements. And of course the space is empty, but that's okay because we can actually bring in the models separate and populate them and assemble them, kind of like decorating your house in The Sims inside of Spatial, which is kind of cool. We can also bring in uh, any Sketchfab model. So if you find something on there, like uh, if there's a cool stove or cauldron or something, I can throw it in here as well. Um, so it looks like Max has added a GLTF material in the newest update for 3ds Max 2023. I have 2023, I don't have the newest update, so I don't have it. So I'm using my default physical material still. Um, that kind of we've been seen since the beginning. So that's whatever the default material is. And that's fine. It's going to work out just fine. It, the only thing I found is when I bring it into spatial, sometimes it looks a little too shiny. So I'm hoping to get the update so I can play with that material. I'll make sure to post a uh, update video for it uh, when I get there so that we have more options than we currently do. But that's okay. Even without those options, this is still going to be cool and look neat and be super easy. So here I have basically the walls of my building. Um, before I go to export it, there's a couple of things I need to do to make sure this is going to work really smooth and not give me any issues and be easy, easy, easy. So that's what we want, right? We want it to be easy. So the first thing is, I've been scaling and moving and transforming and playing with this thing for a while. Uh, when you're creating a model for a game, the scale tool is kind of a funky one because inside of 3ds Max, you think you've changed the shape of something, but the scale tool is just adding um, value you know, to the math of the shape. So I need to make all of those changes permanent. Um, I'm gonna do a couple of different easy ways to do that. That's not gonna be too hard. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick my box, my walls, my main shape. And if you've split your floor and your walls into different pieces, uh, just one of them is fine. The floor will be fine. Just do this with. So I'm gonna come over here to the wrench and I'm gonna click Reset X Form and click Reset Selected. Nothing's gonna really happen to this because you know, uh, I haven't really done much, but that reset X form is basically going to take all those transforms, all the rotations, all the scales, zero them out. Um, again, this is an important step when you're doing a lot of things for a video game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and convert this back over to an edible poly for now. So we're right back where we started. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to attach all of these parts. So what's cool is because I've used one material for everything, I won't even get a weird error about a material naming and issues and all of that, which can happen sometimes if I'm attaching different objects with different materials. You still can use them. You still can attach them. Uh, so I don't want to make it sound like you can't. So if you've done multiple materials, that still work. Um, but this is kind of just an easy step because it's all one thing, all using one material. Uh, so I'm going to attach everything together. The other thing I really needed to make sure I do before I export is I need to flip these walls. Right now, they are facing outward. I need them to face inward. So I'm going to go ahead and grab all of them. And I can do that by clicking Element. Or if I did Polygon and just did like Control A, grab all of them. And I'm going to come down here and flip. Now notice it turns dark. That means I'm looking at the back side. Remember that one side renders and one side doesn't. I want to make an interior space, so I want the inside, when I'm inside the box, to see the walls, not the other way around. If you skip this step, when you go to export your, your walls, if you haven't flipped them earlier, um, basically they're going to be see-through. You won't see the walls at all. So this is that's all I need to do is grab them and click flip. And now I'm just going to attach all this stuff to one model, which is very easy to do. Down here underneath Edit Geometry, we're going to click Attach. Now you can click the big button, and then you can manually select everything. But because I don't have anything in this entire scene other than the parts that I want to be this house, I'm going to do the little box next to it, and it's going to ask me, what do you want to attach? 
I want it all. Attach. So what that's done is it's made all of these different things different elements. So I can still grab them individually. If I go to element, you can see, there it is. Okay, but everything's been attached now. It's all one shape. The walls are facing inside, not outside. Again, if I render it, you can kind of see that. You'll be able to. Well, it looks a little funky. Let's double check those walls, make sure they didn't flip on me. Max might think it knows better, so let's double check. No, it's looking okay. Again, I might need to put a camera inside this house to really be able to view it. So the way it'll work, but it'll be fine. Okay, so I'm done. Now, I've got all of the objects with one texture. They're all attached together. They're all one piece. We flipped the walls. We are finished. So now all I'm going to do is select my house. I'm going to go up here to export. Uh, I can do export or export selected. It doesn't really matter. If I have more than one thing in the scene and I don't want to export it, I can do export selected. Uh, I don't think I have anything else floating around. I think I got rid of that extra beam. Okay. So I guess if I messed up, we'll find out, right? All right, export. We're going to go ahead and let's see. I'm pretty sure this texture is saved in my download folder. Which is not ideal, but that'll be fine. Alright, so let's go ahead and we're going to save this not as FBX though. We're going to go down here to GL Transmission Format. And we're going to name this as uh, My In Save. All right, looks good, looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and do binary format. That's gonna put everything together, bake materials. I wouldn't even, I don't, shouldn't even really need to change any of these things, they look great. And I'm just going to click export. Now this should save out your GLTF file. All I need to do, sorry, kind of trippy here, is come back over to my web browser, come over here to spatial, and we're gonna click create a space. Oop, looks like I've, been logged out too long. So make sure you're logged in. Click create a space. Upload custom space. Now if you find that you're liking spatial, this is only one way to do it. This is kind of the easy way, right? I just make the box, I export it, bingo, I'm, I'm good to go. Um, we can also, however, create stuff in Unity. So if you find that you're uh, wanting to go that way, Look, here it is, my in. Here's my house texture. Now, here it is. Here I'm inside the in, and it's asking, well, how does it line up? Let me come over here to the door and see. I feel like it's a little big. So, I'm gonna click edit. I wanna change the scale a little bit. You may need to play around with your position then. If you play with the scale as well. Oops, I don't want to change the, the height. You know, for this, I'm just kind of trying to scale it based on kind of my character in the door. How tall they'll be. You know, I would say it's okay to kind of a bigger door. Now look, here we are. That looks like I might need to play around with some of my material settings. My walls look a little see-through, which is funky. So I will head over back over to Max and see what's going on with that. But here we go. Uh, my trackpad makes it really hard to turn around to look around this thing properly. There we go. Eh. Sorry. Meh. But here's the roof. There's the rafters I've added. There's the walls. It's kind of an empty space now, so I'll need to come back and kind of add stuff to it and fill it up. You know. I could, could, I could edit this further in Max. I could work on it, etc. Again, I feel like everything looks a little too shiny or see-through. Not digging kind of the material settings. So let's update Max. I'll try it again. But uh, 
overall, again, I'm still pretty happy with this. And had I a pair of VR goggles, I could be walking around this cool space um, in VR. Okay, hopefully you got to see it's pretty easy, lot, very versatile. Again, I now that I have the space, I can start adding content. There is some furniture, kind of pre-made, if you're wanting just to add some stuff. Um, it, it doesn't really fit my, my theme, I guess, currently, but, you know, again, here I can go ahead and add in this chair. So, if we want. Oh, that's too much, huh? So now, we can start decorating it. Like I said, it's kind of, feels like the Sims a bit. You can kind of decorate your dollhouse however you like. All right, I'm thinking I definitely need to get some sort of a candelabra a hanging lighting thing and stuff. Kind of mess around with it a little bit. Um, but hopefully you guys see, really, I'm, I'm nitpicking. Like the one video I did that's 40 minutes long. It's taken longer to play around with it and get it right, tinker with it, until I'm happy with it than it is to make it. And the big thing I want to show you is kind of really, it's as simple as coming over to Max, making your thing, exporting it out, and calling it done. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully it's, it's, you saw it was pretty easy. Again, once you're done with your environment, um, I would say anything that's just going to be the environment itself I'd go ahead and attach um, so it's all one piece. That makes it just a lot easier for bringing it in or whatever. You know, um, you can always delete it out, delete your space, and kind of recreate it um, once you've made any adjustments. So, you know, if you do have the newer version of Max and you want to have those more robust material options to play around, so it's not so dang old, dang shiny, um, you know, have fun with it. But, Again, I can start bringing in all kinds of stuff. Uh, what's neat is, that, like I said, it completely connects to Sketchfab. So if you have a Sketchfab account, you can bring in models from it. Or you can just go to Sketchfab. You can download pretty much their entire, all the downloadable models on there as GL, uh, GLB files, just like this house was. And you could start populating your room with those things as well. I will say for the midterm, um, if you are adding files from Sketchfab or somewhere else, please make sure that you're noting which items are your items, which items you brought in from somewhere else. Um, you know, I hate to use words like plagiarism, uh, but you don't want to pass off somebody else's models as your own. So please keep that in mind that you'll want to make sure it's clearly documented and stated. What are your models? What are somebody else's models? Um, you know, but as long as as long as you're clearly you know clarifying that bring them in you know i think i want to add in some windows i need some furniture some tables some chairs i think maybe again this is supposed to be like a medieval inn so i need a bar might be good to make up hallways or something a lot of those old uh, pubs had like rooms to stay in and stuff so there's a lot of things i could add to this space um it's pretty simple. I spent more time than I probably should have working on the roof. And it looks like I see a few things here, like that little spot where it clips that I might need to tinker with. Um, but overall, again, it's looking good. I'm happy. And I hope you're going to be happy and have fun putting together your model.